so hello everyone welcome you all to the channel now in this video what we're going to do is we're going to look forward and try to understand how the chain link data feeds actually work right so let's get started with writing the contract so as you all know that this uh pragma solidity uh let's say 0 0.8.0 whatever you are using i don't care now uh, we need to import something right over there now we will have an import statement and in that import statement actually what we are going to do is we are going to import the chain link um, okay wait i'll what i'll do is i'll just copy it from the official documentation and i'll just have it over here okay before going any further from here right i want to make sure that you understand this aggregator v3 interface what actually it is i want you to take a deep dive into it right how it actually works what it actually is doing why do we actually need it right so let's get started with it first um, I'll just pick this color. Cool. Now, what actually this aggregator v3 interface is? Now, this has certain number of functions that you will call, which will help you to retrieve the data from any specific data source, right? So, what I want to say is this aggregator v3 interface that we have, it has certain functions, and they that will be called to retrieve the data from multiple data sources. Cool. Now these data sources generally are off chain, right? These are uh, generally off chain, right? And that way they are even losing your, uh, you know, using your less gas fees. Now these will gather the data from various sources. Then they will aggregate it, and then you will get the uh, result on chain. So this will be very reliable. It will be very secure. Cool. Now moving again any further from this aggregator v3 interface, uh, what I want to make sure is that you understand one more thing. That are what are the components that work over here, right? So this whole thing has basically three components. Which it goes? Oh, okay, cool. What are those components? One of them is the consumer consumer contract. Other is the proxy contract, right? Um, and the, at the end comes our this aggregator contract. Cool. Now, but actually, all these are. Let's take a look into each and every one of them. Okay. Now, first of all, comes our consumer contract. Uh, let me change the color. Cool. So, what actually is this consumer contract is? Now, so any application that will be utilizing your data that is coming from the data feed will be called the consumer. Now, this consumer can be both on chain, it can be or it can be off chain. Now, in order to retrieve the data from the data feed. This consumer contract will need a way to interact with this aggregator. Now, this aggregator actually is responsible uh, to take data from multiple source and then retrieve and then, uh, you know, provide you with a single consolidated value. So what actually is this doing is it is exposing a set of function that can be called by this consumer contract, you know, that by that can be called by this consumer contract and they will provide you with the data through aggregator contract. So at this point, what I will suggest to you people is you can just go through the data feeds API that we have on the chain links official documentation and they have, and they are providing you with the complete list of function. Those are available and they have a nice description return. They have a um, cool usage example as well. Right? So another thing that we have is this proxy. Now what actually this proxy is? So proxy always is on chain. So we have also talked about this proxy in the previous video where we were, you know, upgrading the smart contracts through delegate calls. Okay. Again, revising it. So the proxy contract, it is the on-chain contract and it will serve as the proxy to a particular aggregator contract because aggregator contract over here is the main business logic for any specific sort of data feeds. Now, main advantage of using any proxy is that it will allow the underlying aggregator contract and we can upgrade this contract. Um, it um, should fix up. Cool. So it will, what it will do it, it will allow you to upgrade this aggregator contract whenever you need it and it will not affect anything going on this consumer, right? It will not be uh, in problem, right? So for example, let's say you ha there is an aggregator contract that is providing the data feeds for, uh, let's say any specific currency, a cryptocurrency. So several consuming contract rely on this data. Right. Several consumers are relying on that, but let's say the aggregator contracts now need a update. 
for instance uh, they need to include some sort of new algorithms they want to include some sort of new data source so this can potentially break the consumer right and however if a proxy contract is being used over there the consuming contract can continue this to use the same proxy right so you will be using the same proxy although the underlying contract that is the aggregator contract is changed now as long as the interface of the aggregator contract remains same right as long as the interface is going to remain same the consumer contracts can very easily continue to function without any sort of interruption right so what i would suggest again over at this point is so chainlink provides their aggregator proxy dot soul in the github you can just check it out and it can be a very helpful thing for you um, to get started for building your custom proxy contracts right now um, let's come let's jump over to the most important aspect of it that is this aggregator now it is that specific contract and what actually do is it will it's not like it will do for just one time right uh, what it will do is just a minute uh, so it gets periodic data that is the best thing about it so it will receive the data periodically from the oracle network and it will then aggregate them into a single value now this aggregated data right that you got that the aggregated data that you got will be stored on chain cool now it will make it accessible to other smart contract particularly the consumer contract that we have over here this on chain data will be made available to this consumer contract so um, this aggregator has you know a lot of functions you know that uh, will help it um, such, as, such as it can also fetch the decimals why do we need decimals because uh, multiple things have the pricing of you know different decimals like this was the time varying it is of like 102.53 dollars um, other thing can be i bought some sort of bit ethers for around like you know those were 0. 0.000000 so a lot of zeros like 1 to 5 or 1 to 3 something right i don't even remember it but yeah you know different commodities have different decimals so you need that decimals over there uh, and we have another thing that you can use is timestamps cool we have both of these things now these functions are defined at this greater v3 interface now these will uh, be used by the consumer to call the functions and they will retrieve the information from the data feeds now these are actually you know very important aspect when you talk about defi right because there you need very um, accurate up to date price oracles you know for different assets right so this is how the defi systems and the uh, products uh, those are built around it um, get the reliable and accurate source of data and also they are minimizing the amount of data requests sent right that's the beauty of it you know you are actually minimizing the amount of data requests sent to the oracle network right thus again it's a win win situation cool um, let me just remove each and everything from here so that um, i can make you i can write more things over here now um, what i want to talk about more is in this are the components that you need to know right so there are a hell lot of components again with this aggregator v3 so previously we talked about each and everything the three components but now i'm going to talk about the components particularly to this aggregator v3 right so there are uh, multiple variables multiple functions those are useful like um, that you will use are the latest round data we will use it i'll show you guys how it works then we have this latest answer um then we have timestamp like when you retrieve the data let us time stamp now uh, one thing more that you need to understand is this aggregator contract can differ right uh, let's say for um, you know different different conversions you will have to update it right so this can differ from one data feed to another and even among different networks so it is very important and advised to you know check out the source code and understand the configuration on how you are operating it for example let's say there's a, a smart contract that is going to do btc to usds right on polygon but for another you know chain or network it will have some sort of different source code and but there is also one thing that uh, that would help you is if you let's say you want to identify the type of aggregator what version it's actually using then there is a function especially called type and uh, no like this let me write it the way it actually is type and version 
so there's a type and version function on the aggregator contract um and for example you know the contract data typically in aggregator deployment you can refer to um what was that it was a yes ocr so it, you can find it by the name lib ocr right so this is actually that you can also check it out it's very cool thing um it's also again available on the github right for um for more things you can just check out the data feeds api reference right these are some of the basic things that you need to understand around it now let's uh, now let's deep dive into the code now okay i hope you got what actually these all things are now uh, the let's do the major thing right that's the coding part of it cool now we are already done with the import statement so what actually this import statement is doing over here is it is an import statement and it is an interface contract and it will be defining the functions and variable that will be required to interact with the chain link data feed now through this we are actually getting an access for the latest round data that we just talked about right that will help you to actually retrieve the data cool um now let's start with the contract contract yeah it is contract which is by speed um okay um now we have to create a variable whose purpose will be to store the address of the aggregator contract that will provide the data feed for the specific token pair let's say uh, for a case of btc to usds now by storing this aggregator contract in the variable the contract then can be accessed uh, by the functions and to the functions and variables which are defined in this aggregator v3 interface and we can retrieve the latest data so how we are going to do is we are going to create a price feed um, sorry uh, price feed okay so this is the variable that we are going to create of type of what will be the type of it it will be aggregator uh, v3 interface interface um let's create as internal price feed cool we are done with this so let me just explain again it so this line of code that actually is doing is it is actually defining a variable price feeds of the type aggregator v3 interface now it is the interface that is defined in the chain link library right now this internal over here right? this internal over here it means that the variable is only accessible within this current contract and the contract that will be derived through it right so as i already told the main purpose over here is we have to store the address of the aggregator contract which will be providing you with the price data for any specific token pairs cool um okay let's going further now we need a constructor over here what will be the use case of it now we need to initialize this price feed okay so how is how we write a constructor constructor um so sorry i just missed this mm, cool so a uh, simple price feed is equal to cool now price feed will variable so we will um, initialize it with the instance of this aggregator v3 aggregator aggregator everything it correct aggregator v3 and inside it what we are going to provide is so we will set the price feed variable to the instance for the aggregator v3 interface and we will use an address that is already provided on to the official documentation you can just check out you know uh, price feeds for different different networks like let's say in the official home page they have provided it for what we call let's say polia right you can check out for it for gale for the ethereum mainnet binance a smart chain and for everything right i'll just for the time being i'll just have it like this but you will be able to find it out on their official page right uh, now once the price feed variable is set it can be used by any other function within this contract um to retrieve the latest price feed uh, for btc to usds cool we are done with this um let's let's go on a bit further more right okay now we are going to create the function function um i'll name it get latest price um more thing will be what it will return it it will return an integer value cool and it will be click view okay let's try to understand what we are going to do with this okay now this will be a public function 
and it will return the latest price of the particular asset and it will actually use this aggregator v3 interface to get the latest price data from the specified price feed which was actually we you know uh, initialized over here at the constructor cool i hope i made a mistake i just uh, made a mistake small mistake um, this way cool no worries for this now this function what actually is doing it is it will first be you know uh, initializing a tuple right we just need a tuple where we will uh, get the corresponding values of the latest round data function of the aggregator v3 interface now these variables actually you know multiple are not even used and uh, they are just there to you know retrieve some sort of multiple return values okay here we will um, use this get get late latest round data function okay we will just code it down now um okay so tuple i hope you all know about tuples how they work is i'll just use this in if you will go to their official right um, you will find out they are you know providing with a lot of values those are commented out right i'm not going for that currently uh, but yeah i'll just show you how it works so now this function actually it will be retrieving the latest price series from the chain link data feeds and it will call the latest round data function cool what it will be showing is at price feed cool this is our price feed and it will call the latest round data function of the price feed contract right this from this price feed contract we are going to actually call the latest round data and it will return a tuple of contain a uh, tuple containing uh, several pieces of data about the latest price update and it will e even include the current price right as represented as an integer value right um so there are a lot of values that will be coming which we have commented out and this will be latest uh, price let us sorry round data this is the complete that you need to know this is actually also provided into the you know official documentation complete as it is but what i wanted to make sure was you understand each and every line how you can even code it yourself so thank you for this video uh, and i hope you want to experiment with it check it out and one thing is that you need to have link tokens into your wallet if you don't have that you can check out my video already present about it right just go over it um just check out the official documentation in the next video what we're going to do is we will check out um complete smart contract about to making the conversions right more and more conversions how we do it cool thank you for this video i hope you will you know work out with this a lot and lot more